welcome back. We're the bourbon junkies. Head kick. Boom! That's the highest Did it's I ever even been. Get only here. Buddy, that literally I think peaked your head. Yeah. That's I blew three hammies. I'm out. six foot four, so and I only got two. <laughs> We're gonna tell you about seven-ish different reasons whiskey bottles are trying to trick you into buying them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when you're walking in, say you got a, like a nice local liquor store, you're gonna walk in, look at some of the bottles and trying to look at them all, you're like, wow, fancy bottles, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on right now. What are they trying to sell me? Customer confusion. Yeah. It's a marketing technique. Learned it from my wife. What people do is often confuse themselves with their brands intentionally. Yes. Or, you know, what they'll do is just put nonsense things on a label. Terminology is a big trickery in um, the industry. So small batch, that's, that's one that gets thrown out there a lot. Yeah. Hence the Elijah Craig small batch. I don't know why. Small batch literally means nothing. I don't know why though. Cause you can make it feel a little special. Yeah, what's a better word for like, we batched this. Nothing. You just put nothing. It's just Elijah Craig. Blended whiskey, just, sounds like shit. Or, hear me out, just Elijah Craig. I know, but you, but there's too many Elijah Craig for it to be only Elijah Craig. This needs, I'm gonna, Elijah Craig, here, just hear me out, and then just send me the check in the mail when you rebrand. Go ahead. Ready? Elijah Craig. Superb batch. Nailed it. Literally. That means just as much as small batch. But it means it's good. Their small batch is about 10 million bottles. Yeah, they're, listen, some of the small batches are what I like to call bigger than most distilleries. Yeah. So I like, you gotta realize that some giant, okay. Jack Daniels old number seven is, could be a, a small, small batch. batch. Yeah. It could be, I'm not saying that, not everybody's using the branding, but the word small batch, according to TTB, I don't actually mean anything. It just means it's blended together. Yep. But I, it is hard because there's not like a really pretty way to phrase. We just blended a bunch of shit and no. it tastes like that usually. Yeah. Well, that's Craig. Small batch. Suck it batch. Okay. No, we're gonna, we're gonna I remember. feel like we'll get there. I'm trying to still use the S. I don't want them to have to rebrand fully. I want stop to... it, Batch. <laughs> we, we try that. No, we try that on for size. Please stop. Yeah. All right, next tomfoolery slash trickery. I have so many bottles to bring up here. Yeah, they're all like in the same, yeah. Guys, real quick, we're not calling out like necessarily the bottles that are on the table. Wait, wait. Yeah, get that one out of there. You remember when you used to be able to, you know, buy a nice Elijah Craig oh. small batch 12 <laughs> year. That's so, so good. A nice 12 year age statement on it. That so is great. You too. walk in and you just see a big red 12. Which yeah. There's a thing, they're known as that. Yeah. You could walk in and you know you're buying an age dated whiskey. Now, what if you just walked in and saw a big 21? Yeah. Maybe. Or what if you just walked in and saw a giant 12? Proper 12. Or what if you walked in and saw a big eight? Old Charter eight. Or what if you walked in and saw an ancient age 10? Or 10 high. It's just fake. And it's <laughs> Um, this is not 12 years old. This obviously isn't 21 years old. And this isn't eight years old. Ancient age is no longer 10 years old. Yeah. Putting Now, there are times like this, people still do this correctly, where like Russell's 13 had a big 13 on the front. Yes. He's 13 years old. There's it, This comes down to like a lack of transparency and it just trying to trick you. Yeah. This says eight on it. So you think that it's eight years old and you think it's $20 and then you buy it. And, and then like, you find out why it's $20. You find out that it's like yeah. two or three years old. And it's honestly, it's not the worst whiskey in the world. It's just the fact that it's like, that eight doesn't need to be there and we all know it. And you know it too when you put it there. Yeah, you, you know, know what, what you're doing. You're, you know what you're, you're trying doing. to do the people scanning through, seeing a, a number yes. and associating an age with it. When you go into a Total Wine or a liquor barn or a Binnie's or a lot of these bigger liquor stores, you're this gonna see down. hundreds of labels at one time. It's just complete overload. So your eyes just quickly are scanning stuff. You're like eight, eight years old. It, it's just immediate how your brain does that. And they're just taking advantage of that, which is oh, yeah. kind of feels like shit, honestly. Like it Works. doesn't feel good. Proper 12 is named Proper 12. They've never released a 12 year old product. No. I'm sure there's meaning to the word 12 or I forgot it's proper number 12, my bad. Yeah. But it- Yeah, but look how small the number is. Yeah, it is, is funny that it. that is- Number is- really, Hold on. Size eight font. I never realized how. And 12 is 400 font. But the, the, the letters N-O standing for number are almost the same size as the R for the trade or yeah. registered. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, don't be, listen, it's not that they're all fake. It's that grab the bottle and look at it and see if it's actually eight years old. Obviously not. 
listen, 20 year one year old Missy doesn't usually look like that. No. So. And then we got places that, you know, like to claim a little okay. bit more than they are. Full transparency, I love this whiskey. Oh, we both love it. It's really but, good. Um, <clears throat> it's they so claim good. to have stips of Weller distillate in it because a lot of what they do is Solera aged. Yes. So we're down to probably parts per billion of whiskey <laughs> that was actual Stitzel Weller distillate at this point in time and how much they're cranking this out. This, this is a, talk about small batch. Yeah. This is a big batch. Yeah. Like, some people would say she's a big batch when they saw her, right? Because it's so big. This literally is a mass produced volume based product and it's really good, honestly. I also don't know how many times they have Stitzel Weller on the label itself, but it's probably about six. I think it's, yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. Bottled by Stitzel Weller. Yep. Um, matured using rigorous Solera aging method, preserving our rarest whiskey stocks and the spirit of Stitzel Weller. Okay. Uh, Stitzel Weller's on the front. <laughs> Twice, I swear. Three times, dude. Hold on. <laughs> Stitzel, Stitzel, and Stitzel. Buddy, it's on the five front. without even trying. I That's got six. Crazy. And um, you know, needless to say, oh, a little light oh, action. Oh yeah. Oh, get, oh, get get oh, oh, oh disco yeah. mode. It's like the devil. Um, oh, but anyways, oh. No, for real. Um, you gotta listen. Transparency is leaving the industry, or it has been leaving for a little while now. Yeah. Not with everybody, but a lot of people. No, this is not even transparency. This is the lack of trans. This That's is the I mean. opposite. That's what I'm this saying. Is, this is as much confusion as we can put on a label, because you think, oh, okay, sits a weller. You think back to like pappies and stuff yeah. like that. You're like, wow, some legendary stuff in there. And they're yeah. like, kind of. Can I tell you what the interest now? Maybe. Like technically, like Sean said the like parts per kajillion yeah. of Stitzel that exists because of the Solera aging, the tank in theory never empties. There's always just a little left in there. So the weirdest part is, if you know Stitzel Weller, probably a whiskey nerd, Yeah. right? If you are a whiskey nerd, probably know better than to fall for this type of marketing. Yeah. So the weirdest part is, it's not, it doesn't, my brain doesn't make any sense. It doesn't seem beneficial to have I would just love it. this product more if it didn't say Stitzel Weather nine times on and it. And it would, and it's still good. It. Yeah. It's still good whiskey. I just don't understand who this is even advertising to, but. You can go cookie. Just, that. It's just, it's just a little confusing for everybody. You know what? I'll bring another one in here. Okay. You know what is also trying to just <clears throat> ride the wave into your pocketbooks? Celebrity whiskey. Not this specifically, just celebrity whiskey in general. Celebrity whiskey in general, nine times out of 10, Dan already had proper 12 in here. It's someone that has an affinity for whiskey per se. And then it was like, you know what? I have money and can just sell it with my name. Yeah. And it's nine times out of 10, not great whiskey. You're buying eight out of 10. Nick Offerman, oh. probably the biggest asterisk on this entire rant here that we're gonna have. Nick Offerman's lager balloons are great. That man truly enjoys whiskey yeah. and truly Co-signs a fantastic product. So yeah. we're gonna say that. Those are good. That They're is really probably good. the peak of celebrity whiskey, but the rest of them for namesake is they're just buying another product yes. line to sell to someone. The, it's another source of income for them. What's the often and it this is different with the because this was actually legitimate whiskey. Yeah. We, we this isn't bad at all. We just didn't think this one was worth the price tag. Yeah. This is not bad whiskey. There's actually some really bad celebrity whiskey out there. We just didn't the first week's code was anyone. freaking horrendous. I don't care who you are, it was awful. It was like $300. I'll, we don't own a bottle or else that would have been right here. Yeah. But anyways, the hiding behind the celebrity's name. Yeah. Blackened is actually created a very legitimate whiskey brand. Yeah. Not all, most you of them know, don't. You know, I believe in, you know, playing some Metallica or whatever, at some sure, barrels right. to That's age them like. extra yeah. faster. Yeah. To vibrate no. them. But often what's happening is they're just hiding behind a celebrity's name and yeah. community or brand power or whatever you want to call it to sell a metric shit ton of whiskey in the shortest period of time, sometimes never to return to the industry. Gawk. <coughs> Some, somebody, nope. Stop. Nope. Sometimes never to return, like with another product, which yeah. is like, Pure cash grab. I'm in. I'm out. See you later. Thanks for like the two million dollars or whatever. Oh, probably. Not. Well, because yeah, they're selling so yeah. much of it, like yeah. with one release. Because they're probably getting money to just put their name on the product. Yeah, and well, then yeah. probably gross proceeds at some point. Yeah, like the market yeah, it. they're being oh, paid to market yeah. it. Yeah. Brad, Boo the first rendition of the Bradshaw whiskey wasn't very good. No, it was not. It's gotten better. Was the Brothers Bond good? 
Uh, it was just low it's proof fine. MGP. Sure. The cast strength we've had yeah. is much better. Okay. Which is just cast strength MGP. Yeah. But still, there are some they, that are they, They're oh. um, very see through in there. It says distilled in Indiana yeah, and stuff like more that. More transparent. So it's yeah. way more transparent than what they're offering. Listen, there are celebrities into whiskey. Yeah. The they're doing whiskey things. The people who aren't are just just hey man, thanks for the money. See you, bitch. So, anyways, next one, gifted horse or orphan barrel. Orphan barrel in general. Honestly, we're not. Giving Orphan Barrel so much of a hard time, even though a lot of people are like, those stories are fake. Maybe they are. No idea. <laughs> they lean towards feeling fake, but I like a fairy tale. You know, so, they <laughs> feel more like Fable and Folly. You know, <laughs> they do. Made up. They're good, though. They a lot are. of them are really good. Um, Orphan Barrel produces some or puts out some of the best whiskey under 100 See, proof you, on the already, you already did it. Because I read it. They produce. They do. So what you can find on labels from time to time, there's distilleries all over the place to do this. They don't put any information about where the whiskey's from or where it was aged or the mash bills or anything like pertinent to knowing what's inside the bottle before yeah. you buy it. What they put on there is produced by X company, right? And there are a, so many brands that do it. Um, we just targeted this one because we already we love their it. whiskey. Yeah, we, we don't want to dump anyone. Um, we knew that was on the label. But there are so many places that are sourcing whiskey and then just bottling it at their facility or whatever. And then they say produced by X. I think Michter's is a produced by as well. Now that I think about it, I didn't even think about um, that until right now. Listen, produced. So everything above M10 and stuff like that yeah. it probably says produced, produced by, by like M20. Which here's the thing. There's a lot of ways it to get whiskey. In Kentucky. You can contract to still, you can source, you can make your own. There's different ways to do it. You can put produced by on any of those three scenarios I just yeah. mentioned, and it's completely legal. The problem is, is like, I'm a consumer and I want to know what's in the bottle before I buy it, especially when it gets 100%. expensive. So if it's an expensive bottle, it just says produced by, I'd love to even know state of distillation or just age or just mash bill or just any even of these things. Even when it's cheap, I want to know, because if I try something, I'm like, Burr. tell yeah. me who made that so I can avoid the rest of their stuff. We've been tricked a time or two. Yeah. There's a lot of whiskey in here we won't drink. So if you guys want it, yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's just it's just produced a way. By, feels like you're hiding. Yes, we have. Listen, our bottles. We were talking about this earlier. Our bottles will say produced by on them. They will. They'll also they give a ton of information as to where shit came from on the bottle. Mash bills, blends, states of distillation, uh, states, types yeah, like of things. everything that we can, we'll put on there yeah. because I want. I I would like to avoid the situation that we're talking about right now. Is like. Yeah, there's whiskey in the bottle. It's produced by us. Thanks. Well, and here's the what? the tell me something about it. The big problem I think is, well, okay, let's say we're on release one and we put produced by us on the bottle. Yeah, it comes out. People really like it. They liked the, where it was from. Come to even though they didn't know, they liked where it was from. They liked that age, the proof, whatever. And then we produce number two. And we switch entire, sourcing entirely, yeah. and we change it to a source that we don't like or most people don't like. And then nobody knew because they just liked the first one, so they bought the second one. We're gonna build it's you guys bummer. up. You guys are eventually buying three hundred dollar tickle. It's now. A <laughs> such a bummer. Sweet. <laughs> okay. Oh man, I forgot about that one. And then there are companies that literally don't care. I don't know how this is legal. Just, this um, one, this one's just rough. Kentucky Owl. St. Patrick's Day edition. We're not standing. We don't. This isn't it. We're not. The standing only by this thing one. we can find on this bottle literally just says bottled in. Bardstown, Kentucky. It doesn't say even produced by. It doesn't say distilled by. It doesn't say. Uh, it doesn't say anything. But I do nothing. know who the collaboration is done by. An Irish bond person. Louise McGon, Irish whiskey bonder, and John Ray, master blender go. for Kentucky Owl. There you go. Um, there, there is literally no actual information about the whiskey that is in this bottle. It's just really. And bright. I think this is one hundred and thirty dollars, one hundred and fifty. At least one thirty of a, a collab between the two. Yeah. Um, it's a limited release, I know that, but I, y you can't tell me anything with, about it. With a brand that was being blended yeah. by Dixon, and then he left, and then they didn't release that, and then they put this out with Deadman on the back of it, because that was his grandpa's name, so it feels like Dixon was a part of it, and he wasn't a part of it. It's Kentucky Straight Bourbon. It's the bourbon. wildest thing. I, I've got that much information That's out of it, it that it's Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Yeah. Uh, this. There was some weird stuff with there's, that. There's like a timeline that weird. it has to be in Kentucky to still consider it Kentucky straight. It doesn't even have to be distilled in Kentucky. It doesn't? I'm pretty sure it does not have to be. That's such a weird... You can distill something somewhere else, age it like somewhere in Kentucky else. for in a period of time and can call it, call it Kentucky straight because you're skirting something. 
Or can you just call it Kentucky bourbon? Does it can it be straight? I don't know. I, there's I, I, some weird. There is but something this does like say that. Kentucky you're, straight. Yes. But there, there there's is, something. You're right because there's yeah. something like what you're saying without yeah. a doubt. I just don't remember. It, I remember being so weirdly odd that it was like you could definitely you're work around that. You stuff. could work around that. So there's a lot of workarounds here. This whiskey yeah. is very mediocre as well, and it was very expensive. Yeah. This is this is like flashy. Buy me, I'm cool. Great bottle. Kentucky Owl, Dixon. Legacy name, basically, because yeah, of how yeah. long Kentucky Owl's been around at this point in yeah. time with putting out some amazing bottles. You're you're throwing up the the people that are doing uh, like the collaboration on the front of the bottle yeah. with no information about what's inside. Nope. That, it is source, we know that. Nuts. Come to find out, that actually drives us uh, not a lot. Just you can't, listen, anything. the lack of transparency is freaking nonsense. But Yeah, pretty much I guess this entire video boils down to lack of transparency. Yeah, listen, just as a consumer, you gotta be a little careful. Yeah. And you need to do a little research and it's worth it all and the And these time. are the ways that people are trying to trick you. Yeah, it's there. It's 100%. There's some time fooler happening. Listen, there are it. some labels that are getting passed or approved that say things that aren't even legal on them. Oh, I wish or, I would've got it. it. Opperman has one. It was a flavored Kentucky straight bourbon. Yeah, which is not legal. You can't flavor, you can't bourbon, flavor bourbon and call it bourbon. In any way, shape, or form. You can flavor bourbon, but then it's not bourbon anymore. It, but, ain't, it ain't Kentucky straight bourbon. <laughs> not bourbon at all. Yeah. And so, but there are some things, also there's some labels just not being approved by the TTB and putting being put on a shelf. Yeah. Which maybe may, that one may have been, we don't even know, so. I don't, I don't know, know, man. It's a mess. Be like careful. Like cometh a Be careful out there, cookie. <laughs> Take this with you. Look at him. Statue cook. Oh, no. What? The autofocus was on. Oh. Oh, well. <laughs>